Women Matters again in the end of April 2023. And to find the topic, we do a check-in and see what is interesting, what is popping up. Christine, do you want to start? Sure. Um, I guess it's been a month, but uh, Tom is feeling better. So we're going to go to Hungary, to IEC. Um, yeah, it's kind of been kind of a, a busy time trying to get out a little bit more uh, with friends now that winter's over, trying to um, find things to do. Concerts are coming up. Stuff's going on. I went out dancing by myself the uh, uh, a week ago Friday um, just because I love to go out to dance and there's this uh, 530 um, they call it happy hour, but it's just 5.30 and there's a band and they play oldies and cover songs. And I love going to that. And I couldn't get anybody to go with me. Tom doesn't like to go. And none of my girlfriends were available. So uh, that's kind of my thing. I like, uh, I don't know, Victoria, if you know the Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was fun. So doing that kind of thing a little bit more. Um, what else? We saw a good play yesterday or Saturday that was about uh, shadow and transformation. And uh, we were talking about it afterward, you know, from an integral perspective, what was this uh, play about? And uh, it was really, really interesting. Enjoyed it a lot. Some themes, some integral themes came up, although that wasn't the, the point of the play in, by any means. And um, yeah, what else? I don't know. That's about it. I will pass on to Hanali. Thank you, Christine. Um, I love what you said about the dancing because on just before Easter, we also went for a sunset dance. And it was beautiful. I, we were dancing on the beach. It was just beautiful. It was, we had ear sheds, headsets, and each person could just move as I wanted. And there was quite a bit of people. It was quite a big group of people, but it was just beautiful. And then seeing the sun setting, um, yeah, it's something that I also love. It's been quite an active few a month, so to speak. Um, I was really grateful to have been sharing a spiritual wellness and sensibility and possibility session with a group of business people from West Africa. And, you know, it was just wow. It was just wow. And that they could reconnect with their true self in less than an hour was just beautiful. So I'm deeply grateful for that. And yeah, to, on Wednesday, I will be interviewed about embodied resilience, what we can do to, to uh, live more in flow and yeah, live more in flow and embody our awareness will be my theme, which I will be interviewed about. It's for embodiment. Embodied Resilience Conference that will be aired in June. And next week, Monday, we're sharing a Live With Ease a complimentary session, a burst of magic, just to reconnect to magic again because there's so much going on in the world. And so many people I know is really going through a tough time. So it's just to give people a little bit of um, practices that they can use to live with more ease at this time. And then uh, we also launched. Uh, Last week, Friday, we launched a new, a new initiative called Spark. It's to harness our potential wellness indicators in the business world. So I just had a session before this with um, a beautiful friend of mine in Brazil. who has got a company and they, they're looking to participate. And tomorrow I'll be speaking to a gentleman from Finland who wants their company to participate. So we, we're inviting eight companies across the globe to participate in this and they will be able to share case studies later in the year at some conferences. So it's all exciting and I'm really grateful for it. And I'm happy to be here with you ladies, I missed you. And I'll pass on to beautiful Victoria. Thank you, Hanali. Um, yeah, it's great to be with you all again. Um, seems like a million years. I'm not quite sure why that is, but <laughs> um, it's, I don't know what I have to share. I, I've gone, I realized I was having kind of a 
exhaustion breakdown and um, resolved that a lot of it was due to overstimulating my brain with all of my Zoom courses and classes and conferences. And um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I, 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 it seemed like I stopped, but then all of a sudden I was, I was in full gear again. And um, this past weekend was, was, I was just like on a million things at once. Um, so I guess it's like an addiction. I'm going to have to work on it. Um, one of the, my newest discovery, which I stumbled into completely on Friday, it was a three-day conference held by, um, it's actually something I wanted to ask you, I don't know if it's a possible, well, I'll, I'll see. anyway, um, there's something called a course in miracles. And I had only heard about it sort of tangentially because one of my late husband's sons, his youngest son, um, Beatrice's half brother, um, apparently is a big advocate of it and um, does radio and he does podcasts and things. And he actually interviewed Beatrice um, a couple of years ago when she was finishing her master's degree. And um, and she said it was, I, I never heard the interview. I have to listen to it sometime. She said that it was um, very weird because everything that she said, he was trying to apply it to A Course in Miracles, but she knew, <laughs> excuse me, she knew nothing whatsoever about what that was. So she was very confused because um, she was just talking, answering his questions. And he was saying, well, do you think that relates to this and that? And so he was kind of guiding it. And anyway, she, um, I'll have to listen to it sometime. But a teacher that I met, actually it all goes full circle, Heidi, to you. That's now I'm realizing, I mean, not to you <laughs> specifically. Um, I met you, Heidi, um, through the SAND conference, Science and Non-Duality conference, I think it, was, it must have been 2020 because I think all of this Zoom business started for me at the very beginning of the pandemic. And um, yeah, I just realized that that's actually really profound because what's just happened in the last few days is the people that I met there, um, and we didn't even really meet there. We just, it was just via the, the platform, the chat platform or the community platform or something. So we didn't actually have a conversation until I came to Women Matters the first time. Um, and I have another friend that I met there um, who's an artist and now he's given up his art. He's, he's actually in Hungary, um, and um, but he's Belgian and he is, working on environmental issues now. He feels like the the earth's going to come to a, an end. So he actually gave up his job teaching art at an art academy. I mean, it's very dramatic. Um, and then I met, anyway, long story short, I, I'm, I'm not very, I'm a little scattered this morning. Um, through one of the teachers, uh, Asira, who's um, Aboriginal um, in Australia, um, did you go to her session, Heidi, then? Do you remember her? Oh, okay. Anyway, she was speaking at this conference this weekend. And so I guess I'm still on her, her email list. So I, that's how I heard about was her, she was presenting a talk. But what astounded me, and um, now I'm kind of curious, is that it seemed that so many things from that very first SAND conference I went to in 2020, a lot of the speakers were the same at this conference. and. So it was kind of like a closing of the circle because I've been trying to get rid of my Zoom life <laughs> and go back to you know real life. Well, I shouldn't say that. Um, so yeah, so I don't know what it means. I don't know if it means that now I'm at another level, like it's a you know a spiral, and I've I've hit the same exact point on some higher level or what. But um, but it, what I have to say was really profound. Um, it actually gave me chills was that these total strangers, and there were hundreds of them on this, at this conference, um, they had something they called a cafe. And um, every day to, to sort of like people could bring in their, their takeaways from the day. And it felt so intimate. It felt like these people, like, like we had all known each other all our lives. And we were a family and it was really, it gave me a chill because I thought this is so, I couldn't think of it rationally, it made no sense. I didn't know any of the people. I don't even know the subject. I don't even know about this Course in Miracles thing. And it, 
but it was this very loving um people were sharing from the heart but but also very profound like spiritual insights and it i don't know it just anyway so so that kind of left me with the feeling that maybe we are entering into a new a new age or something where um where in a way i was wondering if maybe my impulse to give up the zoom world is not what i should be doing that i in fact i should be um finding ways other ways like you have Heidi to build community through this platform and through this through the um this possibility that's been given to us through technology that you know I've I saw of technology as something you know well and Heidi and Hanali what you just said um the you know you eight eight companies across the globe you know who would have thought of that you know one could have done it through you know email or whatever in the past but there's a there's a kind of intimacy one of my Buddhist teachers says thank you for inviting me into your living room today. <laughs> and there are like 60 people whenever she gives a talk. And, and it, it just, I don't know. And it really feels like that, you know, that, you know, I feel like I know all of you very much more intimately than I do any of my biological family members, because we, because somehow we share on a much more heart level. And um, anyway, that was a huge check-in. I better be quiet now. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that, but maybe that's leads to a topic. So Heidi, thank you. Turn over to you. Yeah, thank you. Talking about spirituality and these things. Yeah, we are doing this too here, don't we? But also in other contexts, and we actually met there. That's true. I don't follow them anymore. But as I said already to Christine, I'm working at the moment very deeply on psychological spiritual uh, issues of mine and it's uh, almost overwhelming I have to say I always say the way to paradise leads through hell <laughs> and so I'm sort of <laughs> hell down and come up again hell down again so um, but um, but it's good I sort of have the feeling that I can handle these things you know despite their insights which are really making me cry and things like that but it's not so devastating as they were maybe 10-15 years ago when I had similar similar insights and similar and, and doing constellation work I mean they are doing with me and I I actually only watch what they are doing in the various positions for for me and for what what is uh, you know important but it's deeply touching, I would say. Also, the, when you understand what errors you did in the past and maybe in the, in the present too, and what's the motivation behind and all these things, that's, it's, you know, it seems to me like, like watching a film in which I am, but somehow I'm not. That's it's it's really a little bit strange, no? I fear that dissociation, but I don't think so. I, I think I'm I'm still very much um, touched, very much in contact with my feelings and with my my whole body and everything. But um, on the other hand, it's like looking from outside and seeing what's going on and. Even if uh, some also in private life, some some unpleasant things are happening, but they have not the power anymore to to let me down completely. And this is a, I feel it like a <laughs> finally, you know. <laughs> so I feel quite equipped to face the future, even if it goes in hell every now and then, you know. So good. That's my topic that today. Uh, we can talk about spirituality and the, the usefulness of spiritual processes and so on, or psychological processes, or whatever. What, what other topic would you offer? I just have a question, Heidi. Um, did you just start this exploration since I saw you last week? Um, the, the, the heavy, I mean, the continuous part, yes. We did it the last four days. You know? And can you describe it a little bit? Because I've never heard of constellation work. I, I'm not sure what you're describing. This is, um, you, oh, how can I say this? 
when it's family constellation, it's not what I do. But if it's family constellation, you have a problem with your father, that you put in the room a representant for your father and for yourself, and then see what is what is playing out by uh, tapping into the let's say akashic fields or something like this, the the morphogenetic fields in the unconscious, in the unconscious realm and get information from there. And the people who are standing on your position talk in the role of that and, and say what is going on for them. And it's often very surprising. I mean, everything they said for me, it was, I mean, I wasn't aware before in many things, but it was absolutely, yeah, 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 that's it. So we are, we are in some way uh, opening the unconscious mind, which we don't, uh, we don't normally have access, let's say in this way. Can you add something, you two? What constellation work is? Is it integral? <laughs> Not everything is integral, but- No, 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 I just wondered when you were asking Christine and, and, and Hanali, I thought- because I see They both uh, have uh, experience with that, I guess. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, at the, at the IEC, conference, they always have a night of constellation work. And, and the part that I connected with the most that Heidi was talking about was there's there's a, a representative of something in the room. So um, it's, it's role playing and um, what's that other, oh, shoot. Um, I'm I'm not remembering, but it there's role playing involved in just kind of checking checking in with other people and with yourself. So, and I was going to say, Victoria, what you described, that feeling that you had, you know, we, uh, we talk about that as kind of, we call it we space in integral or resonance, you know, and that's one of the lovely things about having a community of people who are exploring who they are and themselves and the world around them is that people come in with that kind of energy um, and curiosity and interest in one another. It, it ends up being really lovely, lovely experience. Heidi, um, what as you were talking about uh, the constellation work you were doing, it kind of reminds me of the reading I've been doing about the heroine's journey, because there's this, uh, as women, we often split off from the mother and deny our feminine self. And we had, we identify with the father as we go out into the world and we try to do and we try to accomplish things and make things happen. And then the idea is the journey involves a descent, a descent more into our inner self. And eventually, as you go through that, um, you come out and ascend again, and you're integrating the feminine and the masculine. So it really, the, some of the things you said sounded completely like that kind of a, a circle of knowing that you have bits and pieces of your, of your dad that are still uh, affecting you and, and uh, operating in your world, but you're, you're going into a, a different space and trying to re- um, reimagine or um, resettle those pieces again as you uh, integrate the feminine and the and the masculine and still do and still accomplish and and be out in the world uh, like the hero would. The hero goes out and has all these adventures, but the heroine also um, adds that inner piece of uh, exploration, and then both the hero and the heroine share what they've learned with the world. And that sounds like the piece, Heidi, that's, of, that's the hardest part for all of us, I think, is how do we take what we know or what we've experienced and use it in the service uh, exactly. of others. Exactly. This is also one of my great problems at the moment here. Yeah. Uh, Hanini, I would like your perspective. <laughs> Thank you, Christine, for that. You, you made me some, you remind me of something that I just wrote about something small on Facebook last week. <clears throat> when I was invited to this spiritual wellness, to do this, this experience on spiritual wellness with this business community, who are very religious, they're all very religious, not that there's something wrong with that, just to give the context. I was 
in that week before that, I proposed another topic to them. And then they came back to me with that topic. And I, I proposed a more business-like topic to them. And then they came back with that topic. And I was quite floored by that because I wasn't expecting that they would ask me to speak about spiritual wellness, especially in the, in, in the context to our sensibilities and possibility. But something happened to me personally in that week before, before I was sharing that experience with them. And I was surprised when I came into, the, into Zoom, there was, there was um, 65 people. I didn't know, I did not invite anybody. I didn't publish it anywhere. I just showed up to share it. And as I was sharing it with them, I realized I'm speaking in a different voice. And I speak from a very different place. It, it was as if I, because I was doing some work on myself about why am I afraid to share my bigger, larger than life, self with the world why am i so why am i holding back so many parts of myself so i was doing a lot of work around that and i was also putting together a kind of a workshop to help others with that and so there's a lot of embodiment work in that too besides the psychological spiritual physical side of it emotional side of it but what i realized <laughs> was just after that session the feedback was astounding I, i've never experienced something like that and that resonance um, that you both speak about now was definitely there as well, because it went above the religion. It, 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 because there were, they were at least five pastors in the, in the audience. And I was surprised. And I just, I still, it was not me, it was as of though it was my bigger self speaking, my larger than life self speaking. But I discovered after that, that it was my distorted feminine who was holding me back. And I'll tell you why. A few years ago, I was sharing my first sense-making experience online with people from my community, my extended network. And there was a woman there and she came into the session and she attacked me. And she told me what I was talking about was rubbish and what I was guiding them through was complete rubbish. It, it, really, it really got to me. I was deeply hurt by it. But I wasn't so much hurt by it because of what she did, what she said. But because none of my tribe were there, none of my friends were there to support me. So I felt, again, I was abandoned by my, and I suppose it, it linked to my dad as well, because he died young. But it was my, my tribe were not there for me. It's part of my distorted feminine, the part that think the world won't support me. It doesn't recognize my talents and gifts. It, it won't financially uh, give me the exchange for it. For example, all those stories. But in that moment, because I invited just a few of my close friends to the session um, who, who shared some spiritual journeys with me and personal development journeys with me, I just invited them once. I said, I've got this session tomorrow. If you're available, you're most welcome to join. And I shared the Zoom link with them. And four of them showed up without me really, us really, really putting pressure on them. They just came. And I realized, but it was me, I shifted. I was willing to share my logic in self, um, per, uh, not presence in that, in that session to show up as that, fearless and audacious. And with that, they were there. They were there to support me, but it was because I made the shift. So it wasn't so much about them. So even my feelings that I was not supported by my tribe or, anything like that when I was so deeply hurt and that happened many times I was and it was mostly women in my in my experience it was women who attacked me and I would always be alone in the session so I wouldn't have others who I know to just to be there for me to hold the space for example or just to also participate but it was there was a shift happening in that moment when I when I discovered but it's because I was now I was now healing that distorted feminine part in me by showing up and suddenly then something also happened where my masculine and feminine inside of me, there was a, a different flow. I've always been, because I do a lot of embodiment work, very aware of it, but this was different. I could feel it on a different level. And with that was a spark. There was something else. There was 
something extraordinary happening beyond, which I couldn't, which I still can't define. And it, it, and the word resonance completely is linked for me to that too. That when we show up as our larger than life self to the world, that resonance happens spontaneously. And it will go beyond all the biases and filters of other people and ourselves if we just show up as that. And I think the constellation works beautifully. I've also, many years ago, I was um, invited to a family constellation to play a role. And I was also stunned by the effect because I remember that the role I had to play, it wasn't me speaking, I only speak. It was that person's higher shell speaking through me. But it was an extraordinary experience to be witnessing it. And that it was exactly what that lady was struggling with, all the different people in the constellation. Another friend of mine does ancestry constellations. I haven't gone through it myself. Then she goes into your lineage backwards. And then they see where you can be blocked from there. And that's also powerful work, but I myself haven't gone through this at all. For me personally, I would say I do future constellations <laughs> in some of my work, uh, where I connect to the future self of an individual and then are able to sense that they're, that qualities of that future self. And then the person shapeshift into that individual in front of me, I, I'm able to witness it and then to be able to reflect back to them what I've seen and what I've sensed and what I've experienced. And a process then to help them to move into that physically as well. So is uh, embodiment part two. But it is powerful work. It, anything where we constellate, especially new patterns in the world is, is really powerful, especially in terms of business. And things like that, which can really transform the world around us in many big ways. So for me, it's also a very sacred topic. So thank you, I'm complete for now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it is sacred. I do see this also that we have now with psychology, but also with all these techniques, the possibility to go to the root. What I also saw that is, very deeply conditioned my past uh, my past by by the horrors of the war and the parents who had to go through that and were traumatized you know it, it showed directly the blockages and where father in this case i didn't work with mother yet but how he was just trying to to go through life and um not being able to 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 allow the the girl which I was, uh, but always you know for, forbidden this, forbidden you have to do this and you have to do this. So their way of coping with these horrible experiences has transported um, uh, to us. And I was listening to a, also a summit, but only two or three talks about the the nephews of the war that would be my generation you know the, when the parents have lived the uh, uh, not nephews what is it grandsons granddaughters uh, of of the war when um well, daughters and granddaughters of the war and uh, uh, my parents were very young in the i mean very young shortly over 20 and they had no uh possibility after the war to to create a life which they would have liked to to live you know but then they have already a child and then my father had to find a job and uh, support the family and couldn't continue with his dream and this was then the reason why he transported to all offered or even tried to force every child into completing his dream and I was the first one who responded to it my my elder brothers they just mm, did their own stuff in some way. My my first brother by refusing everything, my other brother by going going away, and I tried to to do this. It didn't appear in the constellation, but uh, only to say how much the experience of our parents are influencing us. And in uh, this sort of constellation, you can find it out. What is yours, and what instead is still theirs, and in how far is it. Um, hindering you from living your life and this is 
this is very, very, very important, I think, because otherwise we stay always in this in this warlike situation with ourselves <laughs> and with others. And um, how can we create peace if we have war inside and, and with the next people around us, you know? Also, we don't want to, but by, because of these conditionings, we just are forced to, because as long as we don't recognize these conditionings and these reasons why we act in a certain way and not in another, how can we change it? And I think as humanity, at least here in Europe, we are at this point where we really have come to grips with this because if not, we continue with, with war and destruction because it's just in our, let's say in our blood, which has not been purified in the past by many enough people. That's what my idea on, on, on this on this topic. I'm sorry, Heidi, can you repeat what your dad's dream was? I missed that piece that what he was trying to get you and your brothers to. Uh, he had out. he was from an artisan family and by because he was good in school, he was allowed to do um, uh, the maturita, no the the high school, let's say. And then he went to university, which was unheard of in, in, in ancestors. Uh, and he got a Bosadi um, studio, what is this, a scholarship. And he started to study. And after one year, he had to go to war and everything was finished, you know? And so um, he sort of tried to find somebody who is good enough and gets a scholarship, which I got, but uh, you know. <laughs> And uh, I just had to follow his path in some way. And uh, and I didn't. I had so much resistance against it and and did my own, and which was not recognized logically, no? because it was not the right thing to do. <laughs> and still wouldn't be. But my, my father died very young, was 59. So. Heidi, I just want to mention your energy has changed so much. So this process, you are, your all presence is very different. There is definitely, so thank you for sharing yourself with us because I can see that something was, there's something happening. It's always, it's also it's always beautiful and sacred to, to be present to that. Yeah. And, and, I, and my, my, my mom, my mom had a similar story. So there was not because of the wars here, yeah, because we also had wars here, yeah, but not obviously of the same magnitude mm -hmm. as you had, but the drought and the, and the financial um, deterioration, what happened at the time when she was born, she, she also projected her dreams onto us. And my siblings, all, all three of them tried to do that for her. I was the rebel <laughs> We said, no, I don't want to do that. And if I, and I looked back at it a while back that if, she didn't project it onto me at such a young age. What would I have done with my life? Because I most probably wouldn't have been necessarily a rebel, so to speak. And I just wanted to break the pattern. That was my whole motive. I want to break that pattern. And in my 40s, I realized that I'm not here to break any pattern. I'm here to create a new one, which is very different. Because it's a very different energy. And oh, it took a lot of yeah. self-work, obviously, to discover that, that I'm not yet to break an old pattern. I'm yet to create a new one. And, but that was a huge shift in my life because until that moment, I wanted to either fix what was wrong or change it. Or what I thought of what I perceived to be wrong at that, you know, through my life. So it was that just this curiosity, if she didn't project it onto me, what, what would I have done with my life? What would I want to, what was my dream then? But it's 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 um, it's powerful things if you really go into it. So thank you for raising it today. My and my dad surrogate. I was surrogating my dad's energy for thirty three years after his death. And mm -hmm. I remember when I was made aware of it, how incredibly angry I was because he stole my energy, he stole my life, so to speak. So I had it from two sides, the masculine and the feminine, but in different ways. Mm -hmm. And yes, that was quite uh, also a um, sense of liberation when I discovered that was that that was what happened. Was even my physique was was showing it. It was it was visible in my in my body as well. Not only just how what I did in my life. So 
Yes, these things deeply uh, influence and impact our journeys. But it's so much joy when we come back on our own paths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even late, but <laughs> at least we do, no? Hopefully. Now, I, I uh, was thinking about um, my father being, you know, a sort of an obstacle to which it's really between me and the, the future. And when you say breaking the bad pattern, instead doing this, uh, creating a new pattern, I've never thought about this because what my mother lived, her pattern was that the ancestors, which I found out in a, a, a constellation, family constellation, her, all my female ancestors wanted to leave uh, the earth as, as quickly as possible because they couldn't stand uh, life. And so they all died before 60 and even much before. And my mother, in my opinion, uh, I thought she was breaking the pattern for a part because she lived until 90. And she didn't die. She always said she would die when I was small. She said she, would, she wouldn't buy any clothes anymore because anyway, she would die soon and things like that. But she didn't. And she had, she had fear of getting cancer. She never got it. But, you know, she, but she terrorized uns, uh, us by, by, by saying this all the time, you know. And I remember being in the front of the bedroom door where she was in, in depression or something. And I cried because she always said she would die. She would leave us or something like this. Anyway, uh, I thought that my uh, uh, reason or one of my big tasks in life would be to break the psychological pattern, you know? And so now you tell me it's not about breaking a pattern, but to create a new one. I have to think deeply about that because as long as you break, you're still involved, no, aren't you? <laughs> and you, you're still connected to the past. So you're still yeah. connected to that reality. And it, we can't look backwards and forward at the same time. And exactly. our feet are facing forward. So we're not walking backwards, we're walking forward. And then it keeps us, it's like we maybe speak about a problem as well. If you say poverty reduction, you're still talking about poverty. You're not saying wealth creation. You see, it's two mm -hmm. very different energies and two very different processes. But it's, so it's, people don't understand even the language that we use sometimes. It's still connected to the problem. So that's why you can't solve it. Even problem solving, the word by itself, is, is saying exactly that. Because you're still connected to that energy of what's, what, you do, what you see as a problem. So you can't even look for a solution or another possibility. Because you can't look at two things at the same time. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then somehow, uh, in addition to what I live today, uh, especially in the constellation. Yeah, where in the back, it was sort of there, but not, shouldn't be, it should go to the, and the one representant, she also had the problem to turn around and to look into the, into the past, you know, so good, good. Thank you. <laughs> Victoria, I'm I'm curious. Um, you know, being a professional musician, and in order to do that, you have to go out into the world on Zoom or otherwise. But you have to do it in front of people, right? <laughs> That's the only way to do your music professionally is is to do it in front of people. And I'm curious if you knew that that was you were going to be able to do that i'm thinking about this theme of how women even if we're we're smart and we have something to offer that we putting it out in the world is different than sharing it amongst our intimates you know going out and and showing everybody else is so different and i was wondering where your confidence or recognition maybe you weren't confident but maybe your recognition that this is i can go out into the world and do this where did that come from and at what age did you experience that? Wow. Um, <laughs> I was gonna ask um, I was gonna ask everyone else questions. Um, but thanks for that. Well, actually, it's really interesting you asked me this because it's something that I've just been thinking about for the last couple of days. I don't know why. It's um well, I, I guess because I'm I'm um I'm I'm in the middle of a lecture series at the university uh, UCSD, um, 
And, but so every two weeks, so it's kind of a, I'm in a kind of weird mind space because I'm not in my usual rhythm of, um, I mean, they scheduled it that way, which is kind of annoying, but um, it occurred to me the other day because I'm fighting so hard for self-compassion, you know, since years um, that the, I think my confidence comes actually out of the trauma. It's a weird, um, it's, I'm not sure I have to still explore it, but it just hit me a few days ago, actually, that um, I'm so much in my element. I was on my way home from my lecture. I was talking to my friend and saying how I, I just love it. I'm in my, it's like a fish in water when I'm lecturing or performing or sharing for, for a, you know, big group of people everything is just lit up. That's, that's who, that's really when I, when I, I'm myself. And, um, and then I was, I suddenly was hit with this realization that I never could be who I was with my family or with my friends. I mean, that what, what you were saying, Hanali, about like your tribe wasn't there to support you. I realized my tribe was never there to support me anywhere, anytime, under any circumstances. I mean, I barely, and poor, poor Beatrice, um, I had to practically, you know, threaten with, you know, death, our, our um, circle of family and friends to, to like attend her graduation from high school, which was, you know, not a big sacrifice. It was right, you know, just down the road, basically. Um, and when she graduated from college, which was a few hours away, um, well, Christine, you know, Santa Barbara, um, my mother couldn't be bothered to go, even though she was going to Europe all the time with her best friend, you know, she couldn't make that. And so I'm, it's occurring to me that, um, and, and with Beatrice too, to support her, because I had that whole, that's, I've had that all my life where nobody showed up. The people I wanted to be there never came. And it was always strangers. It was, I got all my feedback from strangers. And, um, and in school, I was, I was always like the teacher's pet because um, not because I was obnoxious, but because I was just so, I was so alive when I could be in a place where I was learning and sharing and exchanging and people saw me for who I was. I mean, I'm only realizing it consciously now, but um, I think it does yeah, this constellation thing really intrigues me because I, I'm starting to see that there's a lot, there's a lot more in my family background than I actually ever noticed that it's, um, it's sort of coming up as I get older because the other day when I gave my lecture and the people were coming up and they were all so excited and this lady brought this, um, I'm talking about Diaghilev, so it's about Russia and this lady had from the from two weeks before had remembered she brought a whole um prospectus from a trip that she took to Russia and she wanted to show me and she thinks she might have gone to some place that I mentioned in my lecture and I've never been to Russia so I didn't have a clue but um and a man brought I was talking about uh Lalique who was like the 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 Tiffany of France the great um decorative artist um of the 19th century and this man who was an art collector brought a Lalique plate um, into the to the lecture and showed it. And the lecture is also on Zoom, so it's hybrid. So um, I I I was using the plate to tell the people on Zoom, you know, you really should come in person now because you missed this fabulous treat of seeing this beautiful. Um, but it's it's like I was dead, and then all of a sudden I was alive, and I was with these people I didn't know from a bar of soap, you know, and and then. And then I had to leave that again and go back into my shell. Um, so yeah, thanks for asking me that because it's it's actually something I'm I want to explore further is like to see. But I think that is who I really am. Well, even with you, I'm I'm Beatrice. I says I'm different. You know, when she sees me on in a Zoom context than um, when I'm you know with her. So I think it's. Um, yeah, it's it's that I think the real person that I am in way deep inside was never, for whatever reason, was never acknowledged by the people close to me. And um, and I think that's why from the first day I went to school, even in kindergarten, like from the first day I was like, it was like, oh, now I'm home. You know, and my mother, my the mother I wanted was my kindergarten teacher. 
and then my first grade teacher. And then my, you know, it was like, it was like that became my family and my life and my role models and my mentors. Um, yeah. So it's profound, really. Well, thank you for, thank you. <laughs> Cause it's still forming in my brain. I mean, I wonder to what degree, I mean, we could all speak to this maybe, is to what degree the family dynamics might contain, just like having to live up to the, fulfill the fulfill the lost dreams of our parents or our ancestors or whatever, also to what degree maybe a kind of the obverse of that, that in some way we're, oh, here she is, in some way we're being, um, people are envious. It's like, oh, I wish I could have done that when I was your age. You know what I mean? That that there could be a dark side to that. Well, it's dark on either side, that we're either, they're expecting us to fulfill the dreams that were shattered for them. And, and we're kind of like ego extensions um, for our parents or relatives or whatever. But also the, that at the same time, they're, they're resentful and envious. Like, why do you get that chance? I didn't get that chance. I had to work for a living. Why are you so spoiled? You know, the, the, why are you entitled? I had to, you know, deliver newspaper, or, you know, whatever. It's like that kind of, um, that there's a darkness there somehow, rather than the nurturing and supporting and, and um, well, here she is. Let's see what she says. <laughs> Hello. Welcome, Beatrice. We are almost at the end, but it's nice that you show up. <laughs> I'm sorry read my calendar wrong I think because last time it was the time change or I don't know I thought the meeting was at 10 instead of nine okay um, what's the question <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about constellation and family conditionings and and things like that and about uh, uh, missing recognition for what we are doing and missing uh, support or and now your mother spoke about envy uh, by others for for projecting practically the missing things in their life on you and things like that so it was all over the place if you want to uh, to to reassume uh, christine or Haneli also for sort of almost do a check out <laughs> Oh, I have oh yeah. Oh, I just realized um I I have a, a <laughs> speaking of Zoom, I have a class that meets in one minute. So um that I'll I'll say that that was my checkout and I may just slip away, but um I'm sorry to miss you, Beatrice. I haven't seen you for weeks. Um <laughs> this is the only place where I get to see her. <laughs> Not true for the record. Yeah, okay. So Beatrice takes your place and uh, <laughs> have a nice time with your Zoom addiction. <laughs> I, I'm going to stay a minute or two still just because I want to hear a little bit, but I'll slip away without disturbing the, the energy. Okay. Anyway, love to all. And um, I'll just slip away when the time comes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think what um, really comes up for me if I now put it all together of what's been shared. What a wonderful place the world will just be if young people at a very young age are allowed to be who they are and to really not their true selves not being suppressed or having all these projections or expectations. You remind me now of a book that I wrote in 2013. I went into the wild for about three months and I wrote this book, which I never published, because it felt like a biography rather than a book that I want to share with the world about my life until that moment. And its title was, When Others Have Plans for Your Life. And whenever I shared some of it with some of my friends, they said, you have to publish this book. It will help so many different people to realize that they've been living Now you're frozen, Hanali. Gertra came in. Oops, she's out. Uh, and you are frozen, Hanali. I don't know if you 
take off your video. My, my, my video off. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. No, so I just want to say, so I think if others don't have plans for our lives and we are in the position to, to truly fo follow our calling and our passions, what a beautiful place the world will be. But I know we're living in a very different world, but I do at think where we are moving towards the parenting, conscious living, um, education for the future, that might be a possibility now that we don't have so much of that impact of our lineages on our lives and the expectations of society and the likes that younger generations will that don't have to wait till they're 40, 50, 60 to really deal with all these issues. That at a younger age, they are supported just to be who they are and to follow their dreams. Thank yeah. you, I'm complete. Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess for my check-in and check-out and check-through, and <laughs> um, I that just reminded me, I saw something on Facebook the other day where somebody shared um, a statement that someone had read, wrote that said, um, what makes you old is being resentful of the younger generation. And it was kind of going through, so it said, the younger generation is improving things. They're taking everything that you've learned and your parents learned, and they're making it better. And they're smarter about it. And they're more efficient about it. And they're figuring things out that you couldn't figure out um, because of your circumstances. But now they have the opportunity to figure it out. And it said, what keeps you young is to learn from them. To learn from the younger generation keeps you young but to be resentful from the younger generation is what makes you old. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting. I, I don't know that I reshared it <laughs> eloquently, but um, yeah, anyway, so that, that'll be my contribution for the day. Um, learn, learn from the young, which I guess I will learn from the little children that I hang out with sometimes. <laughs> in this case, you should have learned from the old and come in on time to our meeting. Oh. I thought you weren't going to disrupt the energy. Yeah. <laughs> Family quarrels. Okay, continuum, con, uh, continuum. Yeah, it's Italian. And let's go on with the checkouts. Well, I'm going to spend time thinking about everything that people said. I found this helpful. I'm probably going to use some of it for my presentation at IEC in terms of, you know, I think the hard part is, well, we're all pretty self-reflective and explore our inner selves. Um, and maybe with the exception of uh, Victoria, who feels more comfortable going out <laughs> and doing, <laughs> um, most of us have, have that uh, obstacle. So I'm going to think more about that. And uh, I certainly have uh, hesitation to show up at IEC. It's like, what the hell do I have to say? Why would anybody want to listen to me? But, you know, that'll be that uh, the process will actually be part of the journey, right? So looking forward to that. And I will see you guys in two weeks, right? Yes, we will meet in two weeks. And I thank you very much to have listened also to me and in some way also supported the journey I'm on that is really like a roller roller coaster how do you say uh, up up down up down up down up down up down many other things also coming into me and going out and yeah and sometimes it feels like <laughs> but I'm so grateful to have so many people around me who support me and that's really it's a gift of the universe so See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao.